What's up, y'all? This is Cameron Marlowe, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. Congratulations with your debut EP. I've been listening to it these past couple days, and these are like, this is a solid six track EP. Uh, talk to me about that creative process that kind of went on behind the scenes to make this EP happen for you. Man, thank, first off, thank you so much, brother. Um, when it comes to the creative process, man, this is really just my story uh, going from Kannapolis, North Carolina to Nashville. These are all songs leading up to uh, even before I got a record deal that I was just super excited to put out. Um, so, yeah, man, this is just kind of like my, my very first project that really just showcases my artistry and who I am. Why did you feel these six tracks were so important for you to release them to an audience as the introduction to your music and, and you know, what fans can expect after? Um, this is really my story, to be honest with you. This is the story of why I came to Nashville, starting with giving you up. Um, if that, if I wouldn't have uh, got out of that relationship, then I probably would have never made it in Nashville. Uh, the second song, Burn Them All, that's one of the second or third songs I ever wrote in town with anybody. And it's, uh, yeah, it's one of my favorites on there. Um, then I'm pretty sure it's Going There Today, Going There Today. That's an outside cut, but it embodies everything that I felt um, and how I feel, uh, or not how I feel, <laughs> but uh, everything how I felt in the time <laughs> uh, that I uh, was in that relationship. And it, it really feels true to me. So all these songs, they really just embody every part of uh, my journey from Kannapolis to Nashville. And as you kind of mentioned, like some of these songs, it was your first experience with songwriting uh, collaborations. And then, you know, with a song, um, with, with some other songs, it's stuff that you kind of wrote yourself that you're used to doing. How different or how, I guess my question is like how, difficult was it getting in a room with us with a writer for the very first time and how did that chemistry kind of flow oh uh, that, yeah, that was a uh definitely a culture shock for me man so yeah i come from just writing by myself i never really tried to write with other people i'm not good at being vulnerable vulnerable with people so i uh i going into the first writing room man uh trying to like open my like let my guard down and all that it was odd. It really was, but it worked out. And man, I'm excited about the songs we got here. So I think it turned out all right. Now, how important is it for you as an artist that your biggest single, Giving You Up, is something that you wrote yourself? Like no other help, you know, was there with you. Um, and how does that impact your creative process when you kind of move on to the next song? I think it's kind of helped me with my vulnerability. Um, since I wrote that by myself, that was completely vulnerable just to the world. And I showed all my sides. I showed exactly how I felt. And I think that that has really just allowed me to open up and to be able to be vulnerable in a writing room and be able to say what I want to say and make sure that everything embodies me as an artist versus somebody else. That's my biggest goal is to make sure that I'm true to myself and true to my career. And as you write such a great song like that, um, you know, I feel like it's a lot of pressure trying to release a follow-up just because, you know, I've heard some artists say like, I don't want to write the same song twice. I want to try something different. Like, did you feel that was happening with you as you were getting prepared to release Burn Em All, which is your second single? Oh man, the pressure is always on. Um, I've kind of like set the bar there now. So like, everything I do now is always trying to beat that. And it's always in my head. I always want to make sure that I'm out doing myself every time I'm in a room and hopefully these next songs will, will beat it. So I'm just, I'm excited to see where they're going and see how they turn out. And yeah, we're going to, we're going to see, I guess. So back in January, I saw that Brad Hill said that most of the songs you guys were writing or recording, most of those songs were scratch vocals that ended up being like finalized. Um, basically he was talking about, you know, how awesome you are of a singer. Is that, you know, now that the EP is out, did those scratch vocals still remain scratch vocals or did you end up going back and re-recording them? Um, there was a couple that I went back and re-recorded, uh, but some of them on there are scratch vocals. Leaving to be is a scratch vocal. I believe Giving You Up was a scratch vocal. Um, wow. 
yeah so all those i just kind of i don't know some when you're in the studio and you feel the chemistry between the band and yourself it just sometimes it just sounds better i guess you can get more of the emotion out of it so i guess that's why we went with it especially with those two emotional songs um i think that's why it worked right i feel like you have to get that raw that rawness out of it you can't you can't mimic that <laughs> over and over again <laughs> And what was your experience like working with Brad Hill? Have you worked with him before? Was this the first time for you? Like, how did that, I guess, collaboration kind of happen between the two of you in the studio? Uh, so I met Brad Hill right as I moved into town. Didn't really know anybody else um, and really just was looking to start my project. And working with him, man, it was freaking awesome. Like, he really is. He's got a great mind. He's got great creativity. So taking those songs to him, I really didn't have any doubt that he would turn them into anything that was, wasn't what I wanted. So our collaboration was great. Um, he's so easy to work with. I, I really enjoyed working with Brad, man. This has been such a difficult year, you know, around the world, but you were able to still get this opportunity to sign with Columbia Nashville um, while all this was going on. How did this opportunity happen for you? And do you feel like giving you up had a lot of, was a lot of the reason behind you getting signed to this label? Um, I think that Giving You Up definitely had a part in it. Um, but I think also my songwriting uh, had a part in it as well. I think that they like some of my songs. And I think that, or at least I hope that they uh, saw potential in me past just one song. So I'm, I couldn't be more blessed, man. Uh, doing this, I signed my deal in December and then the world shut down in what, March, I think. So I didn't get much time to go out and do some tours or anything like that this year, but I'm looking forward to 2021. Hopefully things open back up and we get rolling again. Now, Burn em All is your most recent single, and I believe that's the one that you released after the signing. Um, what is it about the song that you felt was a perfect follow-up to giving you up? Um, man, I had the sad song and uh, it was just, it was time to show my up-tempo side and show uh, my fun side. And I love rock. So there's a big, heavy rock influence on that. So I wanted to give, uh, I wanted to give my fans like that side of me as well. So I was, I was just excited to show a, I guess a rock element and an up-tempo element to my music. And with this entire EP, the six tracks, I feel like, you know, you've been working on them for some time, but I feel like as much as it was fun recording it, there was definitely some kind of challenges that you must have faced either, you know, with the collaborations as, as far as songwriters go, or just like trying to hit a certain note. What were those challenges that you experienced when recording or even when writing this EP? So the biggest challenge I think we faced was actually in the studio. Sober as a drunk did not sound like sober as a drunk. Uh, <laughs> the very first time we were in the studio together, it, it honestly was kind of lame. And me and Brad talked about it. Like, what is, what are we missing on this? And uh, I think it was the opening guitar line. It just didn't, it didn't work. So we had another guitar player come in and cut uh, some stuff over top of that. And then it finally, once we heard that line, we can kind of base the rest of the track off of it. And yeah, it turned out to be the song it is now, but that definitely was a challenge at first because that's one of my personal favorites on the, on the record. So I was, I was kind of sad. I was like, man, I really want this song to turn out good. And I, I think we got it to a great place now, but we'll see what the fans think. Why did you believe in that song so much, even though it didn't sound right for you then? Man, that's actually an outside cut. Uh, I'm a believer of best song wins. But when I heard that song, man, it felt so true to me. And it felt so much like how I had felt uh, in prior relationships and stuff like that, that I knew it was like, I knew it was a song that could relate to other people and I knew it was true to me. So I wanted to make sure that that song was done right. That's amazing, man. Well, congratulations with the debut EP. Uh, I'm sure once, you know, everything opens up again, you're going to be nonstop touring. So I feel like fans are going to be gravitating towards your music. So congratulations with that. And thank you again for taking the time to talk to me, man. Yeah, man. Thank you so much, brother.